Hello, New Prospect. Welcome to RTB 2021 for April 2nd, 2021. I want to start out by saying thank you to Mr. Bobby for taking uh, yesterday as um, and doing the recording for yesterday. I know that was a blessing to you you guys and especially his discussion of Psalms. I will say this, that, that I didn't get a chance to see that before recording this. I'm actually recording it before uh, he does uh, his. So um, hopefully, I, I don't know what he said about the Psalms, but I'm going to say some, saying, some things in the introduction to the Psalms in just a minute. Uh, so hope, hopefully I'm not saying the same thing over again for y'all. Um, but our text for today are Leviticus 5, Psalm, and we're looking at Psalms 3 and 4. Uh, then we have Proverbs 20 and then Colossians uh, chapter three. So we actually have two of the poetic books that we're now dealing with, with Proverbs and Psalms. So that'll be uh, that'll be interesting. I wish I had time to go through uh, just some tools for interpreting Hebrew poetry and uh, some things to look for, but we really don't have time to, to, to do that. That would be more of a semester long class. Uh, but for, for now, we can just make some comments on these individual texts. So let's start with uh, Leviticus once again, and we're still going through the various sacrifices. And uh, yesterday was chapter four, and uh, of course, uh, chapter four and five are actually dealing with some of the same types of, of sacrifices. In fact, uh, the, the first is, is what's known as the sin offering. Uh, and then you have at the very end of this chapter, you have what's known as the guilt offering. Now, uh, these are these are what are known as the non-characterized by by a, a scholar I really respect, Alan Ross, as non-sweet aroma offerings. The first three are in a different category. These are about really about um, situations that not really resulting from sin specifically, uh, but things that that. Uh, uh, are in need of purification. It shows that even in unintentional things uh, that happen to us, even things like childbirth, uh, according to the the uh, ancient purity rites, uh, can bring uncleanness into the camp. And there needs to be some way of, of restoring that uh, or, or bringing purification uh, because of those types of things. Uh, this could be even unintentional sins. Now, this also stresses that the fact that deliberate sins uh, against God, those can be, those done with a high hand, or those things com committed with a, a sense of presumption, uh, those things, those types of sins could not be atoned for by this or really any other sacrifice. You can look at Numbers 15 uh, for that discussion. So uh, this is a uh, this this is showing again the purity uh, that God desires. Uh, among his people, the holiness that he desires there, the fact that it should be separate and dedicated to him, but it also shows something about the seriousness of sin. By the way, I think David recognizes that in Psalm 51 when he says, you know, if I could, uh, when he's confessing his sin, which was done with a high hand with Bathsheba, uh, if there was, he says, if there was a, a an offering I could bring, I would, but the offering that you require is a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Um, so anyway, uh, just a few discussions here on those those sin offerings. Uh, let's move on to Proverbs, and in Proverbs chapter twenty, as our text for today, um, we have. I guess we could have gone to the Psalms, but we'll go with Proverbs for now. Um, we have a couple of song, Proverbs, and and I want to focus. I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I want to zero in on two specific ones that I think are very important uh, for us today. Uh, one is what we find in chapter. 20 and it is in verse uh verse 29 this is this is one of my favorites the glory of the young man is in their strength but the splendor of the old man uh, of old men is in their gray hair and I've, I've grown to appreciate that more and more uh these days uh with with gray hair but what is this saying it's saying that among god's people um that uh age and the wisdom that comes with age uh and 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 the uh, the experience that comes with age is something that be to be honored within the covenant community of faith, uh, whether that's uh, within the microcosms of the covenant community of faith in the family itself, or whether that's in uh, in the church. And so I think the church should always do things uh, to honor and to respect and to lift up and to encourage and to um, and to minister to, but also. Uh, highlight the wisdom of uh, our uh, our senior adults and those 
uh, with the gray hair, right? Uh, it is, it, and, and I think that does much to, um, to help with the, the ultimate raising of children and grandchildren in the way that should go, right? The other, the other verse I wanted to highlight just very quickly was verse 20, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 20, verse 1. Uh, where it says wine is a mocker, strong drink is a brawler. Uh, it's become increasingly popular among uh, among some some evangelicals to uh, to flaunt their their freedom, Christian freedoms, by engaging in in alcohol consumption. And and uh, you know um, one of the things that that uh, they will say, and perhaps rightly so, is that the, the Bible doesn't is is much more stringent on drunkenness than just partaking of alcohol. There's no real specific prescriptions against that, except to say that there is much that the Bible says about doing things for the glory of God. Uh, there's much that the Bible says about doing things that uh, may put yourself in harmful situations, and this is one of those uh, verses, I think, that why would you even attempt to play with fire? Now, I, I, I'm one who grew up in a teetotaling home, and I'm still maintain, I still maintain that to assure, to assure you guys, and there's a reason for it, and that is because uh, I know uh, what this can do to folks, and uh, so I think it's a, it's always a good thing uh, to, you know, you know, it, in, in your Christian freedom, there may be some who would say, well, you can do this, but is it wise to do is what the author of Proverbs is saying. And I would argue that the author of Proverbs here says it would be wise uh, not to even engage in, in, in an activity that could bring such harm and disruption to not just yourself, but to your family and to the, to, uh, the, to the church body as well. So uh, wine is uh, a mocker. So uh, let's uh, moving on here. We got to go quickly. Uh, so we're moving on to Psalms. Uh, so let me say a few things about Psalms. We'll, we'll have plenty of time to talk about the Psalter. Let me just begin at, at the beginning uh, by stating what the purpose of the Psalms is. Uh, Psalms, uh, the book of Psalms, is not just a book of, uh, of songs to, to give rise to our emotions, to give, um, to give um, a voice to our prayers. It does that. It certainly does that. But it's, it's much more than that. The songs of scripture, um, according to the psalmist, uh, especially we see this in Psalm 1, by beginning Psalm with Psalm, Psalm the book of Psalms with Psalm 1, uh, which is a psalm that celebrates the Torah, Torah is instruction, and that is what the psalms do. Uh, they, don't just, uh, they don't just give rise to the, or give voice to the emotions, they instruct the heart. Uh, and we see this, by the way, in the book of Colossians, uh, chapter 3, we can get there, which goes along very well with this discussion. In Colossians 3, uh, he's, Paul says, let the word of Christ dwell richly in, in you. Well, how do you do that? That's a good thing to do, right? To have the word of Christ dwelling richly in you. Well, you do that uh, by teaching and admonishing, okay? So you can teach and admonish somebody so that the word of cross, Christ is dwelling in them. Uh, so you, in order to get the word of Christ into somebody, you want to teach them and, and encourage them, exhort them, admonish them. Uh, but how do you do that? Well, notice what Paul says. It's by singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual psalms. So one of the ways in which you take the word of Christ and you get it into the lives of individual believers is through the singing of songs and hymns and spiritual songs. Uh, so uh, the psalms are instructions to us, to exhort us, to help us to understand who God is and what he's done on our behalf. It gives, it gives us instruction and exhortation. And in that way, it not just informs the intellect, but it also directs the will. It, it shapes us and molds us as people of Christ. Uh, so as you read through the Psalms, don't just use them as a prayer guide, uh, but use them as a way of, of bringing you into closer conformity with what God would have us to be, which is the image of Christ himself. Um, and of course, one, one other note on that is that if you look at the book of Psalms, it is divided up into five books. The first book is divided there at uh, chapter 41 and 42, and you'll see that the first book of Psalms is ended, and you probably even have in your Bible book two, starting with uh, 42, and then again, I think it's Psalm 73 is the next uh, book, and there's five books. Well, that should bring a bell for us, because there are five books in the Pentateuch, 
uh, the five first five books of the Bible. And those five books, of course, are known as the Torah, which is the instruction of God. And so it's almost as if the psalmist or whoever uh, organized the book of Psalms organized it in a way to recall Torah, in a way to tell us what this purpose of the book of Psalms is, is to give us instruction on who God is, who we are, uh, and how to live in relationship with him, in covenant relationship with him. Um, and there's more that we could say on that. Uh, one, one other thing on our text for today, these are Psalms of Lament, very common in the book of Psalms, which express uh, sorrow and, and even um, asking God to specifically address situations, lamenting a situation that you're in, sorrow over a situation you're in, and asking God to address those situations. And usually the Psalms end with a, a statement of confidence that God would in fact uh, would in fact do that. And Psalm 3 is a, and 4 are good examples of this, where they say, for instance, in verse 8, salvation belongs to the Lord. Uh, your blessing will be on your people. Um, verse 8 of uh, Psalm 4, in peace I will both lie down and and sleep, and for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. So it starts out with, with cries out to God uh, of lamentations, and it ends with, with expressions of confidence. There's only one exception to that, but I'll save that for later. Uh, so I hope those uh, these psalms will be encouragements to you uh, as you grow in your um, in your faith, in your in your close walk with Christ, uh, in your growth in Christ likeness, because they are. Uh, as Paul tells us in Colossians 3, they are ways in which we are exhorted and encouraged and taught to have the word of Christ dwelling richly in us on this day, April 2nd, 2021. Hope you have a great rest of the day.